Now look at the uh, turret structure. The turret structures are designed to anchor the vessel, allow weather waning of the units to accommodate environmental conditions, permit the constant flow of oil and production fluids from vessel to undersea field, all while being a structure capable of quick disconnect in the event of emergency, and also in case whenever you want to take out the FPSO and uh, install it in some other locations, you need to dismantle the whole structure. This is the turret. And you can see the risers are passing through the turret. The latest turrets are having from uh, up to 100 risers are there. And this is the figure of a cutaway section of a turret. And you can see the overview of a very large turret arrangement. This is having around 100 risers. Next, uh, let me come to the flare tower. Flare tower is an elevated vertical stack or chimney found on oil wells or oil rigs and refineries, chemical plants, landfills used for burning of unwanted gas or flammable gas and liquids. After the burning, this gas is converted to heat, water and CO2 and according to the report of the IPCC, methane is 25 times more powerful greenhouse gas than CO2. So the greenhouse effect is more. Whenever a plant equipment items are over pressured, the pressure relief valves on the equipment automatically releases the gases and sometimes even liquid as well, which are routed through large piping uh, runs called uh, flare headers to the flare stacks. The released gases or liquids are burned as they exit the flare stacks. So this is the flare stack, you can see that. Now let's see how it works. The size and brightness of the resulting flame depends upon how much flammable material was released. Steam can be injected into the flame to reduce the formation of black smoke. The injected steam does not, however, make the burning of gas, uh, however, make the burning of gas sound louder, which can cause complaints from nearby residents. Anyway, FPSO will not uh, get that much co that complaints because it is far out into the sea. In advanced flare tip designs, if the steam used is too wet, it can freeze just below the tip, disrupting operations and causing the formation of large icicles. In order to keep the flare system functional, a small amount of gas is continuously burnt, like a pilot light. Due to a limited space on the platform, uh, it is obviously preferable to prefabricate the flare tower elsewhere, generally onshore, and then transport it to a barge to the platform at which time it may be lifted by a derrick onto the deck of the platform. In the case of FPSOs, maybe you can fit it in the, in the, uh, while during the, in the shore itself and then you can transport it. Now this is an, uh, a figure of how you are going to install flare towers. Now flare tower is one, uh, one thing which you have to do FEM analysis because uh, the, the legs where it is going to stand it is on the deck. And under the deck, you have to give special strengthening. So special FEM analysis has to be carried out in the case of flare tower installation and design. Next, uh, let me come to the, the other uh, structural item, that is the heli deck design. For the design of the heli deck, the various uh, appraisal which you have to do is size and structural adequacy of selected helicopter, orientation to prevailing winds, gas exhaust emissions and turbulent environment, effects of vessel motions, if applicable. You should have suitable heli deck height, clear landing approach and takeoff paths, obstructions within permitted limits, access and escape routes, parking arrangements if provided, lighting, markings, the surface, the friction of the surface. Let's see the various types of heli deck orientation. It can be bow mount mounted heli deck as is shown in the figure. Another type of bow mounted. Here it is half mounted helicopter. Then jacket platform with cantilevered helicopter. This is the type of helicopter which I was telling about uh, the previous uh, general arrangement. This type of helicopter, heli deck uh, requires special landing analysis. Uh, in my case, I, I had to do the analysis of around 52 landing cases, different types of landing cases. Now let's see the FEM analysis of the uh, heli deck. Select the type of helicopter first of all. Overall dimensioning you have to do as per API code or whatever code you are following. Fix the preliminary structure and do the FEM analysis using NISA software. There are so many softwares that are available. 
you have to discretize the structure into various uh, nodes and beams. And uh, I have done an analysis, I want to show that I have uh, discretized it into 74 nodes and 163 beams. And this is the drawing of the Helidec uh, platform, uh, which was used for FPM analysis. Uh, you see, this is the structure, this is the cantilevered structure which is uh, falling out. And you look at the bottom of the, of the structure, bottom of the structure. And uh, this uh, bottom structure is the, the whole concentrated load is coming on the bottom area. So that is the area which you have to analyze. So you see this, the, the plan view, you are having the four legs coming there. And uh, this is the uh, place and that also is coming on the side of the ship, on the, on the shell of the ship. So that, that area has to, had to be specially analyzed. So we have done the FEM model like this with uh, various nodes. And uh, after the analysis, you are getting various deflections. And uh, this is the result which you are getting from the, uh, after the FEM analysis. Uh, the re let's see the results. The results are deflections, bending moments, shear forces and member stresses then stress response to be within safe limit. That is what we have to finally conclude. That, this analysis has to be done for this 52 or whatever different cases of landing. Actually, ABS was the class surveyor. They were very strict on this, and they asked for 52 cases. So this has to be achieved in all the cases. This is the approaches, safe approach and takeoff, securing of helicopter on the deck, safe personal access, rescue and firefighting from optional directions, crew misjudgment, aircraft control difficulties, aircraft equipment failure, etc. Effective landing area on installations in motion. Various standards you have to use. It is available. You can look into my paper in detail. Location. The location is important for a heli deck. The heli deck shall be located in a safe area on the installation adjacent to the living quarters. Good personal access should be there and you should have obstruction free zone. So this is the obstruction-free zone. You should, uh, you, sh you should have uh, this, this area, this much area of free zone for uh, obstruction-free zone should be there. The height of the heli deck uh, should have a gap between the heli deck and the supporting module so that there the, the wind turbulence will not be there. Parking facilities, for some cases, uh, you may need to give uh, a space for an additional helicopter to be parked because in the case of eventuality, if one heli helicopter is uh, having trouble, then you, sh you have to bring in another helicopter. You should have a helicopter heli duck motion monitoring as a place from which you can monitor the motion of the helicopter. Lighting, proper lighting should be there as per rules. Marking should be there, heli duck marking on the platform should be there. Then you should have auxiliary equipment, for example, a bird deterrent system is recommended near the heli duck on normally unmanned installations. Tie down points, you should have, uh, you have to tie down the, the heli deck uh, helicopter uh, in a safe way and adequate drainage should be there. Firefighting uh, system should be available. Now the other design uh, areas of FPSO. Apart from these major aspects, one is heating coils for the tanks because this oil is having high, high viscosity. You have to keep it under temperature. Accommodation modification. Normally, the, the FPSOs are having more uh, personal working on the uh, on the site, so it, than a tanker. So you may have to modify the accommodation extensively. Offloading platform. This is one area which is additionally coming. You have to connect. The, the pipelines between the FPSO and the uh, shuttle tanker. So you need to have an offloading platform. Deluge system that is connected with uh, firefighting. You may require additional CHS, so associated piping and connections are involved. Blanking of propellers. You see, FPSOs are, uh, no, the propellers are no more required. So normally propellers are taken out and that portion is blanked off. Other structural modifications. You see, the whole platform is, has to be modified because your whole production uh, processing systems are coming on stools. And uh, these tools are standing on the deck. So you may have to extensively do structural modifications on the deck region. Thank you. Mm -hmm.